a group of physicists want to test the twin paradox for quantum superposition of twins, kind of, except the twins are atoms. That sounds like the kind of thing to bring up at a party if you don't want to be invited back. But it could have deep implications. This experiment could test whether quantum particles obey the rules of Einstein's general relativity, making it a step on the way to finally finding that missing theory of quantum gravity. The twin paradox stems from the early days of Einstein's special relativity, back then when he was dreaming up ways to break our brains. According to the mathematics of his theory, time seems to pass slower for people who move fast. But fast motion is relative. If you zoom by in a rocket, you move fast relative to me. But according to you, I'm the one who's moving fast. This symmetry has given rise to the thought experiment with the twins. What if one of the twins gets into a rocket, flies at high speed and then meets again with the other twin, who's older? It seems like each of them is older than the other. That's the paradox. Most awkward family reunion ever. The solution to this paradox is that the passage of time doesn't actually depend on speed. That's not a physical effect, it's just a misinterpretation of the maths. What actually changes the passage of time is acceleration, a change of velocity. Velocity has a direction, so a change of direction is also an acceleration. The thing is now that the two twins can't meet again until at least one of them turns around, and the one who turns around will be accelerated. Hence, his time runs slower, so no paradox. So we understand that part, but here's the thing that we don't understand. The acceleration in the twin paradox can also be caused by gravity, because that's what Einstein's equivalence principle says. It says that gravity has the same effects as acceleration. But is this also true for quantum particles? That's the part we don't know. And it's not one of these questions where there's an obvious answer. It's not clear how to generalize the equivalence principle to quantum particles. There are at least five different equivalence principles. So what do we do? Throw a die that comes up six? Maybe better do some experiments. This new paper now proposes a clever idea to do it and it uses a technology we've heard of before, optical tweezers. Optical tweezers, as you may remember, are what Spock's using to prune his eyebrows just checking if you're listening. Optical tweezers are basically crossed laser beams that hold atoms in place. They've recently attracted a lot of attention as a way to build a quantum computer out of an array of single atoms, which I talked about in an earlier episode. What they want to do to test the quantum twin paradox is to find out how the time that an atom experiences depends on the acceleration caused by gravity. How do they find out the time that passes for an atom? Well, atoms, like all quantum particles, have an inner clock because they're not just particles, they're also waves. Their wave function changes periodically in time, so you need to keep track of how often the wave has waved, basically. They want to do it this way. They want to create two traps at different altitudes. This is the vertical axis. Initially, there's only an atom in the upper trap and the lower one is empty. Then they bring the traps together, let the atom distribute over both traps and then move them apart. Now the atom is both in the upper and in the lower trap, so it's a superposition. The gravitational acceleration depends on the distance from Earth, so it's higher in the the lower trap. Then they bring the atom parts back together and measure the interference between the two parts of the wave function, because this will depend on the difference of time that passed on each path. They also did a numerical simulation and say that the effect could be measurable with the terbium atoms at a separation of one centimeter if they remain coherent for about 10 seconds, because even atoms have better focus than I do on a Monday morning. There have been a lot of experiments of how particles fall, and that includes particles in quantum states, like a Bose-Einstein condensate. There have also been experiments that test how atoms interfere, but those have been experiments on clouds of atoms, not for superpositions of single atoms. I find it amazing how much we're today still talking about thought experiments that are a hundred years old. The elevator thought experiment that led to the equivalence principle, the 
twin paradox, even Bell's theorem, go back to people who wondered what would happen if, back then in the time when thinking still worked. Yes, I've been talking about quantum physics again. It's definitely my favorite topic. But did you know that I have a quantum mechanics course that you can take for free on brilliant.org? My course will help you understand what a wave function is and what the difference is between superpositions and entanglement. It also covers interference, the uncertainty principle and Bell's theorem. And after that, you can continue maybe with their course on quantum computing or differential equations. All courses on Brilliant have interactive visualizations and come with follow-up questions. I found it to be very effective to learn something new. It really gives you a feeling for what's going on and helps you build general problem-solving skills. They cover a large variety of topics in some science, computer science and maths, from general scientific thinking to dedicated courses on differential equations or large language models. And they're adding new courses each month. It's a fast and easy way to learn and you can do it whenever and wherever you have the time. Sounds good? I hope it does. You can try Brilliant yourself for free if you use my link brilliant.org slash Sabina. That way you'll get to try out everything Brilliant has to offer for full 30 days and you'll get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So go give it a try. I'm sure you won't regret it. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.